team was on a mission to take the road less travelled through little-known towns in search of hot springs and potential geotourism sites. Following in the footsteps of Paul Kruger, the first stop was Bergendal. If you travel along the R541, you'll know you're in Bergendal when you see this interestingly shaped monument. It's a war memorial that serves as a reminder of the Battle of Bergendal, one of the final battles of the Second Anglo-Boer War. The British and the Boers went head to head in a battle, but the Boers were outnumbered and defeated. Once the team took in the gravity of the battle, it was on to Mascharadorp. Now this is a town that has been preserved in time. It's named after Major Joachim Machado, an engineer who had surveyed the land for the proposed Nelspreit Delagoa Bay railway line. The town is also steeped in Anglo-Boer war history. Having evacuated Pretoria in the face of a British invasion, the government under Paul Kruger made Mascharadorp their seat of power. They ran their operation from a train at the station, one carriage being Parliament and the other Paul Kruger's office. The town doesn't look like much at first, but if you look again, it has great tourism potential. It's located off the N4 highway and along the Trout-rich Elans River with a stunning Mpumalanga escarpment on its doorstep. Further down, the R541 took us past the Five Assegais Country Estate, originally owned by Paul Kruger and home of the iconic five-day Num Num hiking trail, we bumped into some hikers enjoying the walk. There's a crowd of four of us that have decided to do the Num Num Trail. Today was our first day, this is our second stopover. We stopped over at the coach house um, last night, which is uh, old train carriages. And this morning we've walked stunning terrain, stunning forests, stunning scenery, and it's really been a pleasant walk. Tough, hard, but really pleasant. And now we're at El Okaya, which is our second stop. But we were on a hot springs mission, and our next stop was the tiny settlement of Butplas, home to Forever Resorts Butplas, a health springs health spa. Swazi tribesmen discovered the spring, which they called Emanzana, meaning healing waters. The water is super schoon. This is by a means to drink the water that out of the bron that comes that is cooled. Drink all the by a means to glue that it medicinal waters that they that they that they drink. The water comes 53 degrees out of the ground. Uh, 34.000 liter a year, then we go to the uh, underdog swim bar in the in the hydro spa. From there we go to the great warm swim bar too, and then we pump our way up from the great warm swim bar to all the swim bar ins. So all our swim bar ins on the bad place, the water comes originally from the bron. The hydro spa is one of the main attractions. Our hydro treatments that we offer, is a large variety of treatments and then in those treatments we make use of the mineral water from the springs for the facials, mud baths and manicures and pedicures. But it's also famous for being a great family getaway. Yes, so we've got water slides that we offer. We've got other uh, facilities as well. We offer go-karts, some paintball, footy slides. There's lots for the kids to do. It is a family-orientated resort. We were still following in the footsteps of Paul Kruger, who first visited Butplas in 1893. Impressed, he bought the property and declared it a holiday resort. Over the years, the property has changed hands many times and is now under the ownership of Forever Resorts. The resort has put the town on the map and creates over 300 local jobs. I was a other man. That man, I was in a man. I was a Sabine, the machine. 
Zij zijn mensen van Massina. En je hebt schappen gaan oppassen. Zo. Toen aan de dag, ik kreeg daar water. Je hebt die mensen gaan zeggen, je hebt uh, s'nachts water gaan krijgen. Ik kom bij die grond en je is warm. En ze zei, die water is de hier wat om te brengen. Zo. Toen ze zei, nee, het is gezond water. Toen ze altijd in het omkomstkip die water is. With the hot springs found, it was back on the road following the scenic R38 to our journey's end, Barberton. Hot Spring Resort getaways certainly are a South African favorite. Joining me in studio now to talk more about what these resorts have to offer is Executive Marketing Manager of Forever Resorts, Christo Wagner. Christo, thank you so much for making the time to talk to us. Let's look at Bud Plus. What differentiates this offering from similar offerings like Warm Baths? Well, similar, not so much Warm Baths, but from your, your normal Gauteng type and your... Um, around Gauteng type of day spas, I think our, in essence with us, we offer a full, a full product, so it's part of the, the offering. Um, it's value add, so we don't necessarily focus on the day spa as, as by itself. Uh, obviously resort related, the accommodation is quite uh, affordable, and therefore our offering on the resorts are also affordable. We also make use of our own products, the Forever Living products, which is the aloe vera products, and therefore I think it's uh, way more uh, valuable and affordable value for money for the, for the clientele. Why have you decided, uh, in addition to this, to go for the themed experience? Yeah, obviously we have the mineral re uh, resources. The, the, at, at Warm Bars and at Butt Plus, we, we combine that with the spas at a place called Chippees, close to Messina in northern Limpopo. We also have a spring that pumps out of the, out of the ground at 56 degrees. But uh, because of the demand for a spa is not that high in that, that area, right. so there we, we utilize it as a rheumatism pool, which the old people go in winter and they just uh, value the, 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 the source. And uh, combined with all the other offerings, that's why we started packaging and we also differentiated the properties in the portfolio to actually tell the market exactly what we offer. Let's look at that portfolio and, and if you look at uh, your spa offering, what's, what are your expectations uh, from a revenue uh, perspective? Yeah, again, back to, to your, your normal uh, day spa experience, which is quite expensive in some instances because they expect most of the revenue stream to come from there. With us, it's a bit different. It's an add-on, as I said. Um, the focus is being on the resort and all the activities where the spa, in essence, is a value add mm. specifically for those two properties. So from a revenue perspective, you must also bear in mind that on the properties, we have, uh, we have retail shops, liquor stores, butcheries, uh, petrol garages, right. we have conferencing, we've got caravan and camping. So from a business perspective, um, it, it's there to add value, and I think from a revenue perspective, probably 5%. Christopher, have property. you had to tweak your business model in any way to become more attractive to the growing black market? Yeah, most definitely. Part and parcel of re-differentiating the, the portfolio, portfolio is specifically to address uh, the growing, we wouldn't like to call it the black market, but the growing uh, market in South Africa. If I may take you back to where we came from. Right. The Aventura Resorts was initially started exactly to grow tourism in South Africa, domestic tourism. And some 10 years ago, government put the last remaining seven of those Aventuras up for tender to privatize them. Now, Forever Resorts, coming from a from a health and beauty perspective with Forever Living Products, then had um, Mount Sheba, Blue Mountain, more, more of your top in properties, but not resorts. And uh, in the bid, the tender, we then won the tender and we uh, uh, bought out the seven resorts, which predominantly is domestic tourism right. focused. 
But because we had the Aventura and the Forever Resorts, we had to take a marketing strategy to get the public to understand that there is now a combined offering from the old seven Aventuras and the three uh, Forevers. We combined it and under the brand Forever, although we still ran with the Aventuras as Aventura Forever, Aventura, but plus Aventura Forever. Before I let you go, let's quickly look at how <coughs> you interface with the communities with the, which you work with. Do you have a tourism development strategy that you deploy there? Yeah, most definitely. Again, in support of uh, national tourism with the growth of domestic tourism, we focus focusing there very strongly now. And we've given each one of our properties their own signature, their own feel, because People wanted to go to a Mount Sheba expecting the same as a Bat Plus. Right. Or somebody would go to a Forever Hotel in Centurion and the offering is totally different from a warm bath. So therefore we differentiate it and we have it now as hotels, resorts, lodges and retreats. Now coming back to the community, I'll brag about our involvement in community just now. But in terms of growing domestic tourism, uh, affordability is the essence. Uh, you still have, let's call it the black diamonds that want the full treatment and therefore we have an offering five star, four star for them, which is more lodge and, 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 and hotel related or the spas at Bat Plus and, and Warm Baths, top end. But we also have affordable self-catering opportunities where you can still this day go for people to a retreat do self-catering and the whole weekend will cost you between 250 and 350 rand per person. That's a fantastic number, 200 uh, to 350 per person. I would like to take you weekend. up for the weekend. I'd like to take you up on.